These problems involve gravity and objects that are falling due to gravity. Remember, we call this type of motion free fall when an object is just falling due to gravity. So a golf ball is thrown straight up in the air at a velocity of 8.3 meters per second. So we can picture the golf ball, right? And it's shot straight up in the air, and it's probably going to follow some sort of path like that. We'll assume it goes straight up and down. So, and the initial velocity it says is 8.3 meters per second. We want to know the maximum height of the golf ball. We want to know how long it will take for that to happen, and how long it will take the ball to fall sort of back down to the ground. So in order to answer a question like this, we need to sort of see what we're given and see what assumptions we need to make. So first of all, we are given that the initial velocity of the ball is 8.3 meters per second. That's pretty straightforward, right? But that sort of seems like that's all the question gives us. And this is where our assumptions come in. So first of all, if the ball's thrown straight up the, in the air and it comes back down, what do you notice about it at the top of its path? It sort of stops for a second and then turns around and comes back. So we can sort of say at the final height or at the top of the height, or the maximum height I should say, the final velocity Vf is equal to zero, right? Because that's what the velocity is going to be at this top point. And okay, so that's two things. We want to find the height. And in this case, what is the height? Well, we can see the height is sort of the dis or the difference between this location and this location. Or another way to think of that is the displacement of the ball, right? So we're essentially looking for the displacement. What kind of equations are we going to use for this question? Well, notice, first of all, right away, we're, we're not given any mass in this question. And when we're not given mass, we can't really use the energy formulas, right? Because all the energy formulas have to do with mass. Because mass and energy, as we know, are very closely related. We know as this ball is thrown up in the air, it's going to slow down, it's going to decelerate. So it's experiencing uniform acceleration. And in order to, so the, the equations we have to analyze that are those five equations of uniform acceleration. Now the question is, which one can we use? And the thing, the other thing to keep in mind is that for those equations, we always need three things in order to solve for the fourth. So in this case, we only have two things. So there's one more assumption that we're going to need. And the assumption we're going to need, you may remember this, is that there is an acceleration. What is the acceleration on Earth? We know, if this is on Earth, at sort of ground level, or sea level, I should say, our acceleration is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared down. Right? We know everything accelerates at the same rate. And this is a key assumption we need to make for a lot of problems like this. OK, so now we have our three things we need to solve for our fourth. So in part A, um, we need to determine the maximum height of the ball. So which what's missing? Time, right? We don't care about time. So which equation doesn't include time? And the, the answer is Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2a delta d. Right? This is the equation that doesn't, doesn't really, um, doesn't include time, right? And we also know our Vf is zero. That's cool, that makes it a lot easier. So let's rearrange this for h, or in this case, delta d, right? So if we're rearranging for delta d, um, I'm gonna do that just in one step. If you need to take a few steps to do that, that's okay. It's gonna be negative V1 squared over two times the acceleration. And we can just plug in our, our numbers now. So negative v1 squared is 8.3 meters per second squared over 2 times the acceleration, which is 9.81 meters per second squared down. I'm just going to put a d for down. And we can plug this in and solve, right? So including that negative, right, 8.3 squared divided by 2 and 9.81. So we get negative, as the answer, negative 3.5, about negative 3.5, to two significant figures. And we'll notice the meters per squared and the meters, sorry, meters per second and the meters per second squared are going to cancel out. We're going to end up with meters in our answer. 
And this might look funny because it's a negative answer. But remember, this is a displacement, so it includes a direction. And if you look, our direction here is down, right? Well, negative 3.5 meters down doesn't really make any sense. What does that mean? It's a little bit confusing. So we know we can just switch that around. Instead of saying negative 3.5 meters down, we can just say 3.5 meters up, which makes sense, right? We would expect our answer to be upwards because the ball is thrown upwards. So that's it. So again, the tricky part of this question was just coming up with these sort of assumptions for our, our values. Let's go on to part B. Part B says, how long will it take the ball to reach the maximum height? And in this case, we're essentially looking for the same distance, basically, from here to here, but we want to know how long that takes. So we want to know what delta t, sorry, not delta t, delta t is for this, right, for that same path. So in this question, we can basically use whichever equation we want. I'm going to use the one without the h. I'm going to use the one with these three. But really, now that we know delta d, we can use any of them. I just want to use these three because I don't want to bring any rounding error from this into our next, our next answer. right? So the equation that we can use that doesn't include delta d is vf equals vi, vf, oops, vf equals vi plus a delta t. Right? Again, we know our final velocity is zero, so that's going to be zero. And we can solve then for our delta t. Delta t is just going to be equal to negative vi over a. And plugging in our numbers, so it's going to be negative 8.3 meters per second. By the way, this, I didn't put this in, but this negative, this 8.3 meters per second is 8.3 meters per second up, right? Because it's in an upward direction. I should have put that in for the first part. We'll just put u for that. And here, we, uh, oh, by the way, we didn't really need to do that for this question because we're squaring it. Um, the direction actually gets sort of destroyed when we square it and the direction of the acceleration is the thing that takes over. But anyways, for this question, we'll keep it in there. And then here we have our acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared down. Can we divide those things? Well, to make it easier, well, to make it possible to calculate it, we should always make sure our directions are the same, right? So I'm going to switch around one of the signs. I'm going to make this positive here by changing this to a down, right? Because I can flip the sign in front of it by changing the direction to the opposite direction. So essentially, we're just dividing 8.3 divided by 9.81, and our answer ends up being a positive number, which is what we'd expect for the time, right, of 0 0.85 seconds rounded to two significant digits, right? So delta t is equal to that. So that's the time it takes to get up to the top and then if we're looking the second the next question, it says, how long will it take the ball to fall from its maximum height back down to the ground? And the thing about this, this motion is actually parabolic. It's a parabola. And one thing you should know about parabolas is that they're symmetric. Whatever happens on this side happens on this side. So essentially, we could say the amount of time it takes to get from here to here is going to be the same as the amount of time it takes to get from here to here. So the answer to C is just the same as the answer to B which you can see in the answers up here. If we wanted to find the total flight time of the ball, or we call that the hang time of the ball, it's going to be twice this number, right? Because it's got to go up and then come back down. There we go. OK, let's try one more question. I actually encourage you to pause the video and try this yourself. Unpause, and I will go through the solution. OK, so we're throwing a rock from a bridge. Oh, sorry, let me draw a bridge. A bridge, there's a bridge, a bridge, pretend it's like a pedestrian bridge, and we're standing on the bridge, yay. Um, and we're going to throw a rock into water, which is 12 meters below. So we're basically throwing the rock a height of 12 meters into the water, right? And we're not just dropping this rock. We're throwing this rock with an initial velocity of 3 meters per second down, right? So we want to know what the velocity of the rock was just before it hits the water. So essentially, what's the velocity at the end of its 12 meters of travel, right? So let's write out some of our givens here. We are given 
the initial velocity is 3 meters per second down. We are given that the height, or I sh I'm going to call it delta d for displacement, and this is a, these are vectors, is 12 meters, and that also is in the downward direction, right? If we think about where it starts and where it ends, we're going in a downward direction. And we want to know, we want to know what v2 is at the end of this. Again, we only have two things that we know here, and we need three in order to solve any problems like this using those five equations. Any ideas? Well, an assumption we can make is that we're taking place on Earth, right? This situation is taking place on Earth. And when that's the case, we know the acceleration is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared down, right? That is the assumption you need to make. You can't solve the problem if you don't make that assumption. Also notice all these directions are down, so we won't have to do any fanciness where sw we're switching the directions. This is actually going to make it quite easy to solve the problem. So let's think about it. What equation can we use? We're trying to solve for v2. We don't care about what? Time, right? Time is the thing we don't care about. So we're going to use the same equation we used in the previous one. vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta d. Okay? We can solve for v2 or vf, call it vf, v2. Yeah, we can call it vf. We've been sticking with vf and vi, so let's just stick with that. Um, we know our initial velocity, this time isn't zero, right? So be careful about that. Um, so we, when we're re rearranging the equation, actually, do we need to rearrange the equation? Not really, because it's already solved for vf. One thing we can do, though, is to get rid of that squared by taking the square root of both sides. So vf is essentially just the square root of that. So I can rewrite it like that, All right? Like, get rid of that. There we go. So vf is the square root of that. So then we can just plug in our numbers. vi squared, so 3 meters per second. Let's open up that square root. 3 meters per second squared. Again, the direction doesn't matter when you're squaring something. Plus 2a is 9.81 meters per second squared. And we'll put down here for the direction, times 12 meters down. So all our directions agree with each other. We don't need to worry about um, changing the sign of any of them. And we can just essentially plug this into the calculator. So 3 squared plus 2 times 9.81 times 12. And then take the square root of this to get 15.6 meters per second, or to two significant digits, 16 meters per second. And because the direction is down, we're going to stick with down. There we go. Not so bad. So now your job is to try these problems. The answers are all there. And remember, the key thing here is going to be to make accurate assumptions about this. If it's happening on Earth, the question doesn't say otherwise, you can usually assume that the acceleration is 9.81, as long as the object is just falling through the air and there's no external forces acting on it other than gravity. There you go. Give them a shot.